1796-6959. Uh, Sam was saluted. The award-winning car salesman, Sam Riley of Joe Myers Toyota. If you're looking to get into a vehicle, give, uh, give him a call like right now at 281-796-6959. And we've got Craig Shelton of the Houston Media Watch and Vince Rochelle uh, here in the station with us. And uh, we'll be talking to them in a moment. Uh, but we want to start the program off by saying this. Uh, coach Johnny Cole will be stepping down as the head football coach at Texas Southern University. And what will happen to the Texas Southern University football program? What's going to happen to the Texas Southern University football program when Coach Cole steps down? And uh, many of you... Uh, like myself, uh, of course, you're wondering why is Coach Cole stepping down and uh, we do not have the report of the NCAA investigation into uh, Texas Southern University's basketball and football programs in front of us. Uh, but you can take my word, uh, like I said earlier, and now we're getting a little bit closer. This is probably going to happen this week. Uh, coach Cole will be stepping down as the head football coach at Texas Southern. And when was the last time? A coach stepped down as the head football coach of an institution in the midst of spring practice. And uh, maybe some of you know that, I don't. Uh, Texas Southern won the SWAC championship in football this past season uh, for the first time in years. And Coach Cole, Johnny Cole, is an uh, alumnus of Texas Southern. Uh, but again, uh, reports are he will be stepping down shortly. Many of you won't believe it until you read it in the Houston Chronicle. Uh, hear it someplace else, uh, but remember this, uh, Michael Harris read it first here on KCOH earlier today, uh, announced it earlier this morning when I gave him the information, and I'm going to make this disclosure also, and uh, the investigation into the basketball program at Texas Southern University uh, could result also in some changes being made at Texas Southern University in regard to the basketball program. And then again, there may be some changes even higher at Texas Southern University. So uh, keep listening, and we'll share that information with you. One other thing, Hal, Josh Passner, Josh Passner of the University of Memphis, the basketball coach, got up to about $8 million today. $8 million, I think, over four or five years. And um, Shaka Smart of uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, a team coming in here in the Houston for the NCAA tournament, uh, makes about $370,000, $325,000 a year. He's indicated, he was interviewed earlier today by George Smith of ESPN, and he indicated that he was going to stay at Virginia Common Union, that he owed it to the team and the players to stay. And we'll find out if that's going to be the case once those universities start coming start coming after him. And like Hal Passner, well, Josh Passner, both are in the early, th one is uh, 33 and the other one is about 27. So uh, we just wanted to throw those things out. And again, the NCAA tournament is coming to Houston. Uh, the Houston Shell uh, Open is coming to Houston. And so a number of things are happening here in the city all at one time. The Astros start play. Carl Crawford and Boston will be in town for exhibition games with the Astros. So a lot of things are happening here in Houston. And uh, 40 years ago, when I went out to the NCAA tournament, I never had any idea that 40 years later, this many people of color would be involved in sports. And especially the NCAA tournament. A 33-year-old guy coming here as the head coach. That's huge in my opinion. You go back and look back 33, 40 years ago and think about the fact that uh, Shaka Smart wasn't even born. Anyway, let's go to Vince and uh, Craig. Good afternoon, fellas. How you doing, Ralph? All What's right. up, Ralph? All right. I'll just let you all throw out something, and then we'll try some telephone calls. 713-526-1430. Sam Riley is at 281-796-6959 if you're looking for a vehicle. I agree with you what you said on uh, the tournament. How much has changed? I think Shaka Smart is one of the great young African American coaches in the nation. And as you said, uh, the the young coach from Memphis just got the five year extension. Josh Pastor, out Josh of Houston, Pastor. also right. And uh, you know, I think Shaka Smart will get uh, the <coughs> same type of attention afterwards. Uh, the coach from Butler last year uh, was in the same situation. He was making three or four hundred thousand dollars a year. And then he got the big extension from right. Butler last year. So, 
you know, it'll be <clears> interesting <throat> to see whether Shaka Smart stays. But if VCU steps up and pays him like they did the coach from Butler, I think that'll happen. Yeah, uh, he won last year. V- VCU won the uh, what is that other tournament? The BCI. What is it? One out of other Vegas. Tournament? BCI, yeah, yeah. whatever that tournament is that yeah. should not exist. Uh, I, I believe Rich Lord is supposed to rate 16 and refer to it as the CBS tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I believe it's the, the one the <laughs> University of Houston went to a couple of times. Yeah, uh, but uh, VCU wins that tournament, and then here you turn around and you get an opportunity the to College Final Basketball Four. Invitational. Uh, college Basketball Invitational. Okay, CBI. Yeah. The CBI. You get an get opportunity, you know, f- f- the following year in the Final Four, so clearly this is a coach that, can, that, that knows what he's doing, you know, getting some results. So we'll just see. It's, well, it's hard to turn down that money. I mean, that's what you're in it for. You're in it right. to achieve and move on, so move up, brother. So we'll they had, a, they they had a great young black coach previous to him, Anthony Grant. Who was at VCU and what? left? Where's he from? Uh, um, where did it, where is he from? Grant was he from here? No, he wasn't no, here. no, 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 he wasn't no. from here. No, no but um, you know we were talking earlier, Ralph, how the gap has shortened between between these mid majors and, and the these major. large powerhouse schools. You know, and I think part of the reason is, first of all, you know I, I can say this: they don't have the budgets that a North Carolina or Kentucky has. Butler and VCU don't have those kind of budgets. And types of facilities. You know, they showed a picture of uh, Butler's dressing room, and it was about as big as a studio, Ralph. Right. right. I mean, it, yeah, it was very small. But I think what happens at some of these mid major schools, you know, you have one and done with these young men having an opportunity to go to the pros after one year. I think at a lot of these mid major schools, young men stay for four years. VCU has four seniors right. that are starting. You know, so these kids have grown together, played together. You know, they've come together cohesively as a group, which they've built that chemistry, which I think in a situation like this makes them a lot more potent team because they've played together for a number of years. Kentucky, year after year, just has to reload. You know, right. recruit the best players. and they're gone. Yeah, and they're gone. Yeah. You know, so that's <clears> a big <throat> difference. And the reason I think a number of these kids – from the mid majors are playing great basketball, <coughs> and also just like we just mentioned, they have some great coaches and some great and players some, and some great and players. players. I mean, the players may develop; the it may take a little bit longer for them to develop. <coughs> right. I think I think the kids are playing well from the mid majors, and I, I and I think they've pretty much always played well from the mid majors. I I don't think there's a lot a lot more talent in mid major schools than there ever was. I think what's happening now is that the major schools are diluted so much but you know, with the players breaking for the, uh, the NBA uh, that just aren't any I mean you look at teams you know, that you know you you know, your teams with upperclassmen on those teams right. uh, <clears throat> run deep in a tournament. But for the most part, what we get, even with our powerhouse teams, the North Carolinas of the world, Kentuckys of the world, we're getting freshmen and sophomores that are leading these teams, and they're gone. And then now you're starting over with more freshmen and sophomores and That's juniors what I'm and seniors who aren't your better players. That's what I'm so, saying. So they have to reload every year. It's the, 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 the dilution of college basketball right the upside of it has been the growth in the mid in the mid major conference I but, agree you know. and, and, but see when you and, and the thing about a guy like um Shaka Smart right 33 years old a uh, guy who had a chance to go to Harvard or some other Ivy League school a USA Today prep uh, academic All-American not not just an athlete all but an academic All-American mm-hmm. when he came out of school and uh at 33 year old, years old to see him accomplishing what he's doing as a coach and I mean it's just an amazing story oh yeah I mean they say the youth they they said that we have a lost generation but that's proof <coughs> the generation is not lost right I, no, mean, I, agree. I mean I know it's one guy but it but, but there's an example of the generation not being lost I agree with you Ralph you know the bottom line is I think I mean <laughs> Call me crazy, but I, I tell you what, it, there's no four teams that any of us pick no. to be in the final four. <laughs> no. I'm picking VCU. Come on, man. I had I'm VCU all VCU along, man. I'm picking VCU to win it all. <laughs> and I tell you why. why. First of all, all the so-called experts, Dick Vitale, Digger Phelps, they Bellis, were pissed off. Yeah, Jay Bellis, Bellis yeah, 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 all of them. Yeah. They were pissed off that VCU was even yeah, in, in the, the tournament. tournament. Right. But, but you know what? They, they were right. No, no, no let's, wait a minute. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to, to the term of selection time. The, they were dead on, though, with, with, with their assessment 
VC, you had some really, really bad losses going into this tournament. And by the way, let's not be too hard on those guys. VCU didn't even bother to watch the tournament selection. Right. So that tells you where they thought that they belonged this season. So I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that you were killing those guys for that. But I have heard other people kind of be hard on Jay Billis and that crew. And I think Jay Billis is the best, period. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. I I just think he's the best. But what I'm saying is, with that said, that's created a mentality within them that it's us against the world. Right. Agreed. You know, and Agreed. and, and yeah. they have carried that through the tournament. And they've been open about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They've been open and about every it. every game, they've gotten picked against. Right. You every know, game. Every yeah. game. Right. You know, so Shaka Smart's got them. If, if you've heard any of his pregame speeches, halftime speeches, he's got them fired up. Right. That, 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 that is the situation, and this is what we're playing for. So how, so how, so, so how does a team like VCU, now we are where we are. Right. right. Okay, so how do they win this thing? What on the on the floor? What has to happen? One game at a time. Don't yeah. look past Butler. Right. You know Butler was there last year in the championship game. And right, with that experience. Yeah. So you one game at a time. You like right. who you like, Ralph? Out of those two, VCU. I mean, why not now? Yeah. 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 I mean, you you know Cinderella. They, yeah. Uh, send a fellow or whatever. I, just, I, think, I, think, I think the player, that little point guard, is what is it, Garcia? Rodriguez. 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 That kid, that kid has a complex. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's got the Napoleon complex, and I think that works for that team, though. Right, right. And if, and if, and if what? against what? Butler, see, I'm picking Butler to beat these guys. I think, Butler, I think Butler plays together so well. They, as a team, that's another no good young coach. Yeah, yes, 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 and he's been averaging like 22 a game plus since they've been in the tournament. Plus you had some kids come off the bench with some ice in their veins. Right, right. They played well for VCU. It's going to yeah. be it's interesting. It's going to be exciting. But see, I'm, I want to share one other thing with you. Now, see, people talk about the, the worst losses. The three worst losses of VCU and Butler this season. VCU lost to, uh, going by the, what that, that RPI rating, uh, VCU lost to Georgia State, ranked number 223. Butler lost to Youngstown State, ranked number 295. VCU lost to Northeastern, ranked 178. Butler lost to Evansville, Evansville, which was ranked 136. And then Wright, Wright State, which was ranked 124. South Florida, ranked 155, uh, beat VCU. VCU had a total RPI ranking of those three losses of 556. Five, Butler was right behind them at 555. Five, five. So if you go by those numbers, I mean, a lot of people play those numbers. Mm-hmm. Texas Mike and people like Astro Mike, they go by those. <laughs> but, hey, <laughs> but they're in the big show. Right. I mean, they're there. Well, they have to be forgiven for their bad losses just the way that we forgive big schools for, for losing to Buff. Right. B- Butler. Butler. For, for losing, losing to VCU. VCU. Right. Um, because, it, listen, in conference play is in conference play. It doesn't matter what conference you're in. Teams that know you and see you all the time are going to play well against you in those inter-conference matchups and things like that. So it can happen. You can be the best team in the conference and get and take it on the tail any any weekend. So if we're going to forgive the big schools for losing the mid-majors... Um, forgive the mid-majors right. for lo- losing the to lesser, schools. lesser schools when they play. Right? Another thing that's becoming key in the tournament, Ralph, is right. just... Who's hot at that time? Well, right. that's every year. I, I yeah, mean, yeah, and the bottom right. line is now you see some of these younger coaches that can really coach mm-hmm. yeah. make mm-hmm. a difference. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, the Texases, the Notre Dames, they can't make it past the, the 32. Well, you, you, can, you, can, you can make an argument that these coaches from these mid major conferences are really the people with the best resumes to take these jobs at the next level in these major conferences right. because the way that the college basketball has changed so much with early entry into the the NBA, right. well, these coaches from these mid-major conferences, they're used to getting more out of less. Right. So if you get one of these guys that can really get it done coaching-wise, right. and you put them in a, at Texas or uh, somewhere, those guys are going to have as good a chance of excelling as anybody because they're, they're, to them, they probably view that as a much better situation to work with, with better talent because they've had to, had, had to compete so hard. To uh, to you know, to compete with those bigger schools coming out of mid-major conference with talent. Because listen, mid-major schools can put a five, a starting five on the floor that can compete with anybody. What old schools get beat is that if they have any significant injuries, their bitches just aren't as deep right. with, with blue chip type talent. You know, well, well, compared to football, you know, football you need 17, 18 key players to play with the big boys. 
of the big conferences. Right. In basketball, you get two or three good players. You get you one, in the mix. You get right. one NBA quality guy or one fence line NBA right. quality guy and just serviceable people you can play in you can play uh, in collegiate basketball right right uh, before we go to the telephone Texas Southern with, with Johnny Cole being out uh, stepping down as the head football coach at Texas Southern uh, shortly uh, what's the future what is that what comes to your mind when you think about all that? and the NCAA investi- investigation is stepping down as a coach uh, oh, do we have you saw time? With, uh, uh, Bruce Pearl stepping down uh, resigning or whatever, beginning fired to Tennessee. Trussell may be out at Ohio State. Uh, it just goes to show you that the price of winning a lot of times is getting beyond the price that you can pay. And the bottom line is what a lot of these coaches are doing is stepping over the line. And, you know, there's a fine line of what can and can't be done. And in respect to that, there are a number of coaches that are stepping over the line. And to be quite honest with you, those that get caught, get busted. There's some now that are stepping over that line that haven't gotten caught. But there's a fine line of what you can do to do it the right way. Can Texas Southern survive? I mean, uh, we don't know what the violations are, what they're going to be charged with violating yet. Uh, but uh, And you don't know what the penalty, the overall penalty is going to be. But when a coach has to... A coach decides his best in, in, in the best interest of the school to step down. Uh, that's sending the message right there, right? When you say can Texas Southern survive, um, I mean survive under what conditions? Uh, the the, condi- the present the, conditions. Yeah, I mean they're not completely back to start with. I mean, you know, Coach Cole got the program to respectability now, but that doesn't mean that the program is, could have is at a point where it can be expected to be able to to weather. Uh, a situation like this. I mean, you need continuity in college football, uh, more so athletics than you do in the, in, the, in the pros because of recruiting and things. And obviously, Coach Cole has been able to get some dynamics established with recruiting locally. So my first mind would say no. I, I think obviously you take a step back. Now, from the administrative viewpoint of, of, of uh, the AD, he may see it as a circumstance to where we take a step, two steps back to take a step forward in a year or two because I guess the uh, violations must be so egregious that this man who has came in and built your program now has to go. And when you haven't won in however many years, since what, the 40s or whatever? So yeah. uh, for, for the average fan listening, it, it just doesn't smell right and it just doesn't seem right and it's hard to take because you, you know so much optimism around the program now but do you want to know what they do you, do you think there's a desire from people to want to know what they did do oh well, well, of course I would like, like to yeah. know I really yeah, I don't know yeah. especially if you're going to get rid of your coach yeah yeah. yeah. you know and and I'll, I'll say this I, I, I know Charles McClellan uh, athletic director and I think he's one that does things the right way and in respect to that uh, you know Am I surprised? Yes, but yet I know TSU hasn't won on on the on the level in a long time, and I know the desire to win was there, but I can't really speak on the situation because I don't know what took place. Yeah, well, no disrespect to Dr. McCullen, I, I was, had the honor of interviewing him when he first got the job. He did a wonderful job at rebuild, be, rebuilding the program at Prairie View A and M. Right, he did a fantastic job. But when you say he does things the right way. I, I, just just for the sake of argument, I would say this. You got one coach that you're going to get rid of because of some type of violation, NCAA violations that we don't know the, the gist of just yet. Right. But you bring in another coach who's a, to coach your basketball team, Coach Tony Harvey, who's doing a fantastic job, don't get me wrong, but he came into the program with some red flags right. from, from Missouri, okay? And then you, you look at that and you say, well, you you bringing this guy in who already has some red flags, and then you got a like guy like Granger who was right there, ready and available, who also reportedly would have been able to bring in some 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 money dedicated to the university had he gotten a job. But you hire, then then the nepotism thing comes into place, right? And Tony Harvey gets that job. So the right the, way you may you may you may skirt from that. Is that what you're saying? I, you, you may disagree with that. I, I, I can make an argument. I can see where some people would make an argument for that. Right, and, and, and Coach Cole that. also came you know? with. Um, uh, he had problems with several other universities also um, well, uh, when he came. Well, I mean that brings up another question. Here's a question I'll ask: At our black universities, mm-hmm. do we have the selection of coaches? 
I mean, do we do we have the luxury of of choosing a coach from a number of different sources? I I, I don't think the selection is that great. It's We're not for, for the black universities. It's not to, to for a couple reasons. But, okay, Number okay. one is black universities, for the most part, are not going to consider any white coaches. Period. Right. For the most part, okay? right. And they probably bet not. Right. If, if they want to stay in the favor of their of their uh, alumni, okay. Right. So that thins it out right away. Right. Because let's not fool ourselves. We got plenty of African American coaches that should be working in the NFL at high level jobs. But but we we're, we're, we're not the only people who know how to coach. Okay. So you 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 thin your pool down all the magically because you're only going to for the most part consider black coaches but time out so how many black you coaches, black coaches you had, uh, how, Virginia Union had a black coach uh, what was that Hampton I think had a black I mean a white coach I'm well, my point is how many black coaches been getting the opportunity to build their resume so that we have a big enough pool to but do I'm what saying, Vince is talking about have a healthy pool but you have to have you have to have people with vision like you were talking about Charles McKellen you, you have to have people with vision who are going to give the young people a chance just like you talked about Granger mm -hmm. I mean as far as we know Kevin Granger TSU product no dirt on it. Right. Should have been the coach. Right. I mean, if you, I mean, if you're going back from the outside looking in, I agree. I agree. I guess, I guess, I lean so much toward Granger and every uh, regime is because I just felt that when I got word, uh, the, and then maybe it was a rumor. I don't know how much truth there was to it, but from trusted sources, that that was going to be some money dedicated to the to the yeah, University I, I athletic the department yeah, I, from some from a group of N NBA guys that included Kenny Smith. And uh, James Posey, I believe it was. Uh, so, you know, I mean, a person who's been in, in, in Houston all his life, I mean, used to live on the corner of Isabella and Live Oak around the corner from the Shape Center. I want to see TSU do the thing, man. I want to see TSU sh get their shine on. Right. And, and here we have a guy, Granger, who's a but TSU see, guy and is going to bring in needed money. If, let's just say all that was true. And then you go and you bring this other guy in who's got some sordid issues in his past. And by the way, he's a son in law. I understand. Let's mention. I'm sorry. I let's son, let's mention son. one more point when we talk about black coaches and the pool of selection at the black, black university. Yes, yes. Okay. Is it a goal for a number of black coaches to go back and coach at SWAC schools? Well, you have or, some. Uh, yeah, but or do they want to go? To the next level. To, to the next level. Yeah. They, they want to go to the next level. Uh, yeah. they, they, you're gonna have special people that that have a special vision that want to, want to stay right where you know uh, maybe with with a particular school or whatever. But most coaches are looking to to make that money. You know, it's about money. Seven one three five two six one four three zero. Caller, you're on. Go ahead. Go. go Hello, on. guys. This is VCU Mike. Mike. Oh, VCU, VCU Mike. Mike. Hey, my cousin goes there. Cousin Rodriguez goes there. <laughs> Go ahead. Listen, listen, guys. First, I want to talk Johnny Cole and TSU, and then I want to uh, ask you guys how Brittany Grinder is going to kick those Aggie women back to College Station tonight. Yeah, she going to do them in, man. Listen, first of all, we all agree Johnny's going to get paid, right? No matter how they word it, He's stepping go, down or firing. He, he, has a, uh, he has a year or so left on his contract. He will get some money. He will get some money. Okay. And I don't care what the NCAA does. You can't take away the memory and the experience of the championship, correct? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I think it's kind of tainted. <laughs> Not in your Texas mind. Might, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a little tainted if it, according to what takes place and according to what happened. You're saying in your mind? Yes. 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 See, that's, see what I'm saying? Because no one really knows what the NCAA is going to rule, but if your coach feels... If your coach feels he has to step down or the school has to feel he has to step down or both, think about it. Something had to happen. Right. What happened? Right. You it know what? It should be a time of celebration. It's tainted for me, but for a different reason. It's right. not tainted. I'm not, I'm not upset with Coach Cole. And I'm, not, right. I'm not upset with the university and, and Dr. McCullum for doing what he feels is best for the university because his resume speaks for itself as an AD. I'm, I'm just speaking purely as a fan, as a, as a Houstonian. I'm, it's tainted for me. The tenure is tainted because I felt like it was just beginning, and it was beginning. It was so excited the way it was beginning, and now it's. But see, it smells like it's going backwards. Right, but see, you, you know, it, but you, you, you have know. to do it the right way, or you hit the highway and you have all the. Oh, Ralph, nobody's doing it the right way. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, you can't afford. They get caught then. Let me put it. I that agree. Way. Okay, I agree. Okay. I maybe, agree. maybe they're not. But, but guess what, Rev? Why is Ohio State standing behind Jim Trussell? Ohio State is not. Go read that school newspaper. 
Well, the well, married students. Now you may have some administrators, but some of they're kind of whistling a little bit. Well, yeah. they're whiz- they, yeah, they, they get shaken. The they on the fence. Well, since yeah. the since the new allegations came out, yeah, but, but, but initially, but you had some. But you had the, the the newspaper on the campus was totally against that from the beginning. Yeah, but they don't hire and fire. Yeah, but they you know? but they can still make noise, and they, that's what they've yeah. been doing. I just think I just think. I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a naive fan perspective I, yeah. I, I keep going back to that Because that's what this is all about to me I can't separate the two this time I, I want to see our university I got two kids over there you right. know? You know, we yeah, My son's in the band right. March. I just, you know I, I was really pulling for Coach Cole uh, and, I, and that you program And uh, I just wish him the best But I mean, your, your, your question was What do we think? And I think right. that they're going backwards now uh, Texas well, Mike? Are we all supporting Baylor tonight? Brittany Grinder is going to Dunk those Aggie women all the way to college station. Correct? Give me a score. Oh, boy. Uh, by, <laughs> by 10. <laughs> by, by 10. Well, Brittany, how Brittany's many blocks gonna, would Brittany, Brittany have tonight? Brittany's going to score 40. How, how many, how many, many blocks? Uh, y'all, y'all, 10 blocks. Y'all, 10 blocks, y'all, 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 Maya, uh, Maya. Well, this is not a female. I, 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 I bet you a nickel, buddy. You got 10 blocks. I say 8 blocks tonight. 10 blocks. All right. I don't normally talk... Women's basketball, but What's wrong what about Skylar Diggins? I mean, I, I will move <laughs> off the track a little bit. What about Skylar Diggins? No, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, hey, no. hey, 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 hey! You know what? We got we in the final four round. Yeah, I know you're in the final so, four. So I can talk I a saw, little bit now. Yeah. See, now. What's the coach from Tennessee? I knew you all had the game for Pat one minute. When Pat she came Summit. out in green last night, I said, Pat Pat Summit came out green. <laughs> yeah, she had on, am I right? She had on green. She had on green. green. I said, yeah. why would the yeah. lady have on green and orange? Or the, that's the color of the school. You know, I thought yeah. her comments were inappropriate after yeah. the game, by the way. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Texas Mike. Because no, normally, Vince, Vince, yes. Vince yes. Oh, yes. You, you drive to Waco and get me a burger, Vince. <laughs> I thought the Tennessee coaches' comments after the game were a little bit. I mean, normally when, when kids lose in the tournament, right. especially after making it deep in the tournament, right. you know, you normally know, get the coach, come, first thing out of their mouth is, I'm really disappointed. There's right. no game tomorrow. Right. That's something you say when you got more games to play. At the end of the season, you're. But, you know, Tennessee, you're not going to win every year. No. And I just thought that was, you know, I'm disappointed in these kids. I mean, come on, Pat. Let's yeah. get another you know, one in Give me a break. Call it your own. Go ahead. Good evening, Cooper. Go ahead. Hey. The rest of you guys. How y'all doing? How you doing, All right. sir? Hey, look here. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for Baylor and Griner because she finished with Nemix, but I wouldn't be surprised if A&M won. And I don't think it's going to be no big uh, stomping by uh, Baylor. If you watch the staff of the Connecticut game last, I mean, not Connecticut, but Gonzaga. Gonzaga was the highest scoring women's team in the country. And that, uh, I can't think of a name now, scored 21 points in the first half. Stanford switched defense on them. She scored four. Right. Mega Agume. Yeah. yeah. Agumet. See, I'm on my college. It will, I'm on my, my, my college hoops, Ralph. On women's college hoops. Hey, Ralph, you just so, have because of this show. I, <laughs> well, let me, let me, let me, let me, since we're on college, on women's basketball, <laughs> can we can we at least acknowledge the fact that my girl Cheryl Swoops is back in the WNBA, man? Yeah, well, Tulsa, she's going. Yeah, to, she's coming back. I to do her Vince thing. is trying to get his radio show moved up to Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a show in Tulsa. Man, no, for trouble, no, man. No, no. Don't start no, nothing. There won't be none. No, no. I'll stay right Leave here. Leave Cheryl alone. Yeah. I'll stay right here. Right. The okay, girls let's take do it. another one. Okay, here we go. Call in your own. Go ahead. Good afternoon, I see. All right. Help sites down, son. Yeah, that's, that happens sometimes. What's that, bitch? Hey, how's it going? It happens. Hung up on Baseball, open that door right quick, quick and look at it. Doc, what's going on with you, man? I missed you this I weekend. I hung yeah, up on Doc. Yeah, well, you hung up yeah. on top of Texas Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. It was an accident. I called up and everything. Come on, Doc. Well, I should have called over here this. At least I won't get hung up on Oh, Doc, you get on out here with that, man. Okay, I see. What's wrong with the website, son? Probably uh, uh, too many women on it. What's that? Too many women on it. Lil T from Chicago is coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lil T. Uh, It'll be up tomorrow. Yeah, well, I hope so, uh, see, cause yeah. I'm putting, pumping plenty of money in. Uh, I hope uh, Coach Cole will find a good job, man. He, he won in 50 some years, 80 some years, and all of a sudden he won. And he, they got an investigation. I see. Don't never forget where you come from, sir. Never, never. Huh? What's that? Never that, have. That, that, never have. Tell them again, Chief. Let me get another one in. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay, let's get another one in. Call it your own. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Hey, man. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Vincent, but uh, I'll see if she's going to kill that team up there like she killed the uh, 
Hey, hang on, on this man. Until she done what she did, man. I got you. All right. Okay, thank you. 713-526-1430. Let me take a quick break. We'll be right back. Knees, even arthritis. So you're covered whenever Thursday and wherever you're hurt. Why stop being right to sure it takes guts to survive in Louisiana. There's Louisiana. no match for the icy hot patch. For temporary topical pain relief, use only as directed. Live from Progressive. Flo again, talking about something dear to my heart. Saving money. And we have Marcy. Hi, can I really find other car insurance companies' rates on Progressive.com? Sure can. It makes rate shopping fast and saving as easy as pie. Oh, it's got to be easier than that. Ever tried making a pecan pie? It can get soupy. Visit Progressive.com to compare rates and start saving today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and its affiliates may Village, Ohio. Comparison rates not available in Massachusetts and certain other states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Are you tired of sex pills that don't work? Hi, this is David Pormon, president of Zencore Plus, and I want to send you a free trial pack of Zencore, the world's strongest natural sex pill, absolutely free. Zencore works in less than 45 minutes and lasts up to 24 hours, guaranteed. You're not going to believe how long you're going to last. This is the best FDA lab-tested sex pill available today. Listen, I could talk for hours about the special, powerful formula that makes up Zencore and support why it works so well, but I'd rather let you find out for yourself because the proof is in the pill. And let me tell you, man to man, I take Zencore every time I perform and couldn't imagine being without it, and neither will you. So call now and try my powerful FDA lab-tested Zencore absolutely free. Find out how to get your free supply of Zencore before it's too late. Call 1-800-924-4146. That's 1-800-924-4146. Size does matter. Don't miss out on your free supply. 1-800-924-4146. That's 1-800-924-4146. It's been a lot of years since the economy has been so bad. Layoffs, cutbacks, millions of people are losing hope. Before you give up, listen closely. My name is Alva Wesley Thomas. I have over 20 years experience helping people get out of debt. Stop the harassing calls. Don't lose your home, your car, or your retirement. Get rid of all those IRS taxes for good. Get a fresh start. You deserve it and your family deserve it. We have not because we know not. What is holding you back? Know your options before giving up. I promise to be fair and honest with you. Call me, Alva Wesley Thomas, at 713-278-0800 for a free consultation. Call attorney Alva Wesley Thomas, 713-278-0800, 713-278-0800, or visit alvawesleythomas.com. The law firm of attorney Alva Wesley Thomas is a debt relief agency. Red tag savings continue. Smart buyers shop Joe Myers. This is Jerry Rocco, general manager and partner of Joe Myers Toyota. And right now when you see red, you'll save green during our annual red tag sales event. Zero percent financing is available for a full 60 months on select models until 3-31-2011. If that's not good enough, we have new 2011 standard Corolla sedans for only fourteen nine. New 2011 standard Camry sedans for only sixteen nine. New 2011 RAV4s only twenty thousand nine hundred. And new 2011 automatic 4.6 liter V8 double cap tenders only twenty thousand nine hundred. Plus, the Joe Myers Toyota, if we make a deal, we'll pay off your trade no matter how much you owe. With over twenty lenders to choose from, if you need credit, come and get it. Hurry in today during our red tag sale because price makes a difference at Joe Myers Toyota. Only two miles west of Bell Wade on Highway 290, exit Eldridge in Jersey Valley. Our is must to do. For K. Smart buyers shop Joe Myers. Price, price exclude tax tag registration title and 150 dealer fee. For details, call toll free at one eight six six buy Toyota. And don't forget Sam Riley out of Joe Myers Toyota, the award winning Sam Riley. If you're looking for a vehicle, give him a call two eight one. 796-6959-281-796-6959. And as we go back to Vince and uh, we go back to Craig, we want to mention this. You can call in at 713-526-1430. Just want to throw this out there also. Earl Campbell celebrating a birthday today. All right. And uh, Earl Campbell, 56 years old today. Bring back members. Shook oh, head. Man. Oh, yeah. It brings <laughs> back memories. Great, greatest sports memories. Yeah. Earl Earl owns several of them for me. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to throw his name out there. You had something you wanted to throw out? Go ahead. You had something on that piece of paper? You got all that paperwork there. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's just Final Four oh, okay. information. Give me give me a piece of, that we may not have touched that you have on that piece of paper. Uh, 
I tell you what, this is back to the Fab Five. Yes. That sure has touched a lot of Duke uh, coaches and players yeah. to where they responded to it as far as what Jalen Rose said. Do you think he's going to apologize? No. Okay. Go ahead. I don't. I, I, basically, what he said, you know, well, we all know what, what he What's said, right. you know. But but I get what they're upset about is that he he said that he meant that when he was a nineteen year old kid. Mm-hmm. But he didn't say that. But he didn't say that during the documentary. That right. he, he he didn't mention that. No. You know, <laughs> and uh, Jay Williams, Coach K, Grant Hill, <laughs> all of them are coming back and saying, "Hey, you know, bottom line is this is the real deal." And they, you know they're defending Duke, which which you'd expect them to do. But I tell you what, it's caused a lot of drama. Between Duke and Michigan, in, yeah, I know, in, in I, know, I know some folks up in Detroit with a high opinion of De- of uh, Jalen Rose. I mean, they say you're a really good dude. I like Jalen Rose. He's, he's I was real sharp, and I've always been a fan. Um, uh, I thought he was kind of under underappreciated as a player, even uh, for most of his career. Um, but man, he just really came off as an angry dude, and just just to simplify it, as a hater. Yeah, you know, I you know. He did. I mean, other than because okay, I'll just I'll just look at the Grant Hill comment comment that he made about Grant Hill in particular. As an African American, until Jalen Rose said that, and that's my barometer, is once he said, see, once people say something about you, then we start to think about it. But prior to then, what had Grant Hill ever done that that made you as an African American look at him and go, oh, he's Uncle Tom? Well, I, I mean, in what? What has he done? No, he what has, he, what he, has he, he said? Anything. anything. It goes back to what we discussed earlier. Yeah. What I think was that Jalen Rose really took it hard that his father, Jimmy Walker, who was a professional athlete, professional basketball player, mm-hmm. never really acknowledged him. Mm-hmm. Not was, in his life. And, and it was not in his life. You know, yeah. in respect to that, I think he, he carried a chip on his shoulder, and that's why he came out at Duke like he did because he didn't get recruited by Duke and may, who knows maybe he wanted to go to Duke right you yeah. know but I he said clearly at least he wanted to be if nothing else acknowledged by, by right. recruiting by right. yeah. Yeah. yeah so so they didn't even the only player they recruited off of that team was Chris Webber but does, but, yeah. the, but does it really if, 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 which if, makes his argument not right. add up if they, if they recruited a kid like Chris Webber right but it seems it, to me that they're saying you're elite talent Jason but he's 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 Godspeed talent he's off the hook so is it is it that duke is obviously they're looking for clean cut images okay cool but if they were going after chris weber but not not quite the, maybe the cleanest cut key, but he would have gone after chris mm-hmm. weber if he was from a uh, an inner city school in detroit right he went to a private he school he went to a private school and and and, yeah, yeah. and what they said about duke well, players, should they look further than what school you went to when they start looking Maybe, at your but past I think that school, hey, I, I agree. That you. school yeah. still had a difference, right? Right. But That's see, a good point. But see, the, being good called point. an Uncle Tom does it really bother you? No, it, it, it never bothered. Bother. And I can speak. I have never been called. I, I, I can. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, it would bother yeah, me. Yeah, well, well, no, it would bother you. Oh yes, because, it would bother me. Yeah, but you, well, yeah, it would okay. bother me. But, but I'm saying, but if you know who you really are, does it bother? No, it doesn't. It still would bother me. And I can speak on that on a personal basis because the same is said about Notre Dame to a certain extent. Right, I know, I've heard it. You understand what I'm saying? Not, I mean, not Uncle Tom, but you know, they they recruit certain type kids. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, so it's the same thing. And the bottom line is, as Ralph just said, if you know your tradition, if you know who you are, if you know why you went there for the right reason, right. If you don't hang out with your homeboys yeah, yeah. on the, if yeah. you don't hang out with your homies on the corner anymore, uh, you don't drink a, 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 you know, forty ounce with them on the corner anymore, mm-hmm. and they call you <coughs> bougie or they say you've changed. Mm-hmm. Does that really bother you? No, that would. I mean, because I, 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 I have. Because I, guess, guess what? Maybe, maybe, maybe I have changed. Who's, yeah. who's, yeah. who's, you know, who's you the know, other? I'm not drinking other? with you no more. I, you know, maybe yeah. I have changed. Who's the other announcer from Duke? Williams is his name? The brother. Dear, uh, uh, the one who was in the uh, accident? J- the, uh, no, no, no. Jay. Is it? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Go ahead. Go ahead. Point. Basically, the point he made, because he commented on what Jalen Rose said as well. Yes. He said, a lot of times in the community, there's a there's a conversation amongst black folk of of how black you are. Right, right. And in right. respect mm-hmm. to that, what he said was if it meant I went to Duke 
if it meant I was a student athlete, if it meant I flowed and can, <coughs> can hang and, and, and do my interviews in white America as well as black America, America right. call me an Uncle Tom. <laughs> right. That's right. basically what he said. Right. And, and, and the point he was making was, hey, because I decided to go to a school that stresses, you know, academics, and because I'm in a position to where I'm now uh, uh, announcing in white America— Right. And that makes me different because I'm there. Right. Call me an Uncle Tom is basically what he said. But see, let me let me yeah. relate it this way. Not that I agree. No, not. But let me relate it this way. The the, the rappers and and some of the hip hoppers or whatever they use the term niggas in in, in, in their song. Right. Mm -hmm. And and then they they twist it now where they use it where they use it, it's supposed to be about love. If, if <laughs> I mean, how see that's more insulting to me than Uncle Tom phrase. Well, that's generational. No, but that's what's generational about it. I'll explain it to you. Go ahead. And because in hip hop culture, the the user terminology uh -huh. is is it is done in an endearing fashion. It is. It, how can it be when you really understand what the word means? How can you then twist that word around? If you can do that with with niggas, you can do mm -hmm. that same thing with Uncle Tom. You can Uncle Tom mm -hmm. in many cases they're <clears throat> labeling guys who are smart and trying mm -hmm. to do the right thing, Uncle Toms. Right, like it's not the same, though, Ralph. Why not? Why is it not? Because it's it, it's what is what you make of it, and and, and I, I respect where you coming from with it, and that's that's a different time, a different generation, no, different way now. of thinking. But now, and with this generation of kids, right. and in this culture, society, yes, uh, referring to each other in that fashion is not in considered an insult to them, and and it's clear that it's not because if it was an insult well, to them, they, they wouldn't be doing okay, it. Okay, but if you all, if they can ask us to understand that. You should be able to understand the Uncle Tom thing. If we, if you want us to understand that, I didn't. I, I don't know that they want you to understand it. Well, I'm just saying. Know, but if you, know. you want us to understand that that means love, mm -hmm. to when us to us that means a rope, that mm -hmm. means enslavement. Right. It, 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 but right. what if I told you that was the hip hop's generation, uh, unorthodox as it may be, yes. way of acknowledging their history? Now, uh, is it right to do so? When they get 60 years old, I'm sure they'll look back and say, well, maybe we didn't pick the best way to acknowledge our history. But I'm telling you, Ralph, that there's, when I tell you that there's no disrespect meant or taken in that culture, yeah. it's, I'm giving you the gospel. I will. So, so, I, so there's a change of the meaning of the word. Definitely. Uh, no uh, doubt about okay, it. Okay. No okay. doubt about so it. So if it's a change in the meaning of the word from the hip-hop culture, as you're talking about, mm -hmm. we can go on with this forever. Yeah, I know we can. Can, can white folks use the word? No. And, okay. All right. No, but I've heard white folks, I've heard white kids called black kids that same name. Not See, that's black what, kids. Yes, I, yes, I have. I've heard. I've seen it. basketball well, games. Yeah. Hey, my, well, hey, my, well, hey, my, hey, let me say this. Hey, my, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Yeah, yes. Let's, so, let's, use, so, let's use the most that's famous like, white person okay, in your pop culture as go an ahead. example. Go ahead. Eminem. Go ahead. Enough said, because he don't do it. No, no, and but I'm talking about not to do no, it. No, but, but I'm saying, and he, but and the, he got, the younger kids, the kids that are not the M&Ms and, 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 and the others, they don't understand it. They get a different meaning of it. They think it's cool, just like you just that's said. That's an aberration. But that's an aberration. That's no, not the majority. Yeah, but, but, it, it, but the, among the majority, it's right. not accepted, Ralph. Right, but they I wouldn't do it. No, but I've seen it done. And yeah, but I mean, happy. yeah, but at the same time, yeah, all that's just a at them. small, at them. small percentage. <laughs> no, I don't idea. think so. See, I think that's... No, I'm, I'm, like, I'm maybe a little bit closer to that culture. I'm, I'm going to tell you that it's not... You're not going to get white kids openly... Dropping in bombs you, on black kids you and going home standing up. It's you not happening. That same kind of philosophy that you're talking about mm -hmm. is what led the Jewish people to end up, in men, in some cases, like they did over in Germany. Because they didn't take it serious in the beginning. They didn't take the Nazis serious, and you saw the end result. And all I'm saying well, is, if you, even if you let a little crease of it get in there. Really? And this is my take <laughs> on that. I think, the, I think the culture, I think the, I think the statement of our culture in regard to our youth yes. today started long before they were born. I think it started. No, that didn't start, start with us. hip hop. No, no, it no, started, no, no. Wait a minute. Let me finish, bro. Go ahead, but don't, it, don't, it, don't it, put it, that on us. Oh well, really? Richard Pryor grew up in your generation, yeah, not well, mine. Well, hey, and that, and no, when no, I was a kid, no, let me think, be fair no, with me, Ralph. Go ahead. He grew up in your generation, right. and it was okay for him to MF, SOB, and you name it. But the first time a rapper said. B-I-T-C-H on the record. Oh, my God. The the GBCs, a.k.a. Gambling Boat Christians, was falling out of their chairs. Did that rapper just say you, that? You, All he said was you, what Richard Pryor said. You had some of us. Y'all played it for you, us. You had, we woke you, up Saturday mornings and you, we heard it. You had some of us 
even when that was going on, who rebelled against that. Who? Well, well, I didn't see the march. march. I missed the march. You're looking at that. I missed the I missed, I missed, I missed, I missed the march there on were, Richard Pryor. There were articles <laughs> written. There were articles written. <laughs> by who? Black folks? Yes. Yes. There were articles written by black folks. Mike, Google it. Google it up. Google it up. But, Google right, up. but do you deny? Do <laughs> you, you, but will you meet me halfway and say that that your generation yes. um, is as much responsible for the culture of African Americans as the current generation is. You I, can't, I, you can't I, separate I, I was, the two. I will, I will share this with you. I think we we didn't work you all hard enough. Yes, I agree with that. We didn't. But that's why some of us try to make up for it now. Yes, I agree with you. Okay. But at the, at the I, same time, we have a short responsibility. We one thing we never did. You can't give us. What's that? We never wore our pants down on our asses. Oh, like come on, man. That's more. That's more to a generation than than fashion. No, 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 no. no. That, 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 come on, fashion was another that argument. But what kind of fashion? I'll give listen. you that. I'm not debating okay, well, okay, well, it. But you back. can't gloss yes, the you entire can. that's all, culture. That's all part of, of that pants. That's all part of that thing. Okay, listen. That's all part of that thing. Well, I grew up in hip hop culture. Okay, I grew up in the pants sagging culture. Right, right, but. I work in a very corporate environment, which means I didn't go for my job interview with my pants set. I, I wore a suit and a tie, and I've been there for almost you're, 10 you're years. Well, I'm, I'm not an aberration. There, but, but there, there are many guys but just like me. No, but we never did that. That There's no way you could explain that to me. But Ralph, and guess what? And we never drank Thunderbird on the corner and went home and beat up our women. Well, hey, that, it still happens now. But Chris Brown did well, what? what did he start? What did Chris Brown just do? What did he start though? What, 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 did, what did Chris Brown say he saw? What right. did he but say you he got saw? More going up. Speaking out on it than ever before. And we should be speaking out on it. But guess what we should be doing? What's we that? should be speaking out on it just like me and you doing now. Right, but that's what we're doing. Let's get me you let you close it up. This the arbitrator. Hey, I want to <laughs> 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 I want to just say I'm looking forward to the final four <laughs> and all the festivities surrounding. <laughs> you know, you know and I will be at the game well, you this know what? weekend. There's, there's, uh, there's no Tomism in the KCOA studio. We keep it real. Oh, here. I know. We keep I'm it straight. Real. Started the conversation. Exactly. We yeah. gonna keep it real. You okay. Know? Now, what's uh, what, what time are you on? Where, where I'm you on at? six to eight p.m. KGOW fifteen sixty. Sunday, Sunday evenings. Okay, so you'll be on in between the NCAA playoffs. Right, I'm right after the the, right after the cut. Yeah, I'm right after the cut. Where's as soon the, as I get my fuck, the cut? I turn on the, the cut at? sixty. My memory is bad. Well, the I'm cut. About, I'm pulling down my pants. The cut is right. <laughs> I walk out of my pants. <laughs> What's the cut? <laughs> yeah. what, what time is the cut? The cut is right here on KCOH, man. Fourteen thirty a.m. And the big house, KCR, every every Sunday night at five o'clock. Tune into the cut for me and former NFL defensive back Marcus Coleman. And uh, we have high energy, good conversation, good music, and uh, fat old burger. Hey, and remember the, the <laughs> best burger in town. The best yeah, burger in there. Fat whole burger. The best burger in the state. Hey, the Nickel Group Sandwich and Grill. The best burger in the state. I said eight blocks. You said ten. Yeah. Well, best my, burger well, in town. Nickel, nickel burger. The right, nickel, right. nickel burger. But, but whether the cut, the review, there is nobody that talks like we like talk about sports, rap. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. Bargaining properties is next. And they wonder why we keep voting rap for the show. <laughs> Fiesta, born and bred right here in the city, and has been serving Houstonians since 1972, and proud of it.